Good evening. Welcome to QUT Web News. Good evening. Another bank executive has apologised to a parliamentary committee over poor bank procedures and customers who were penalised as a result. ANZ boss Shane Elliott appeared on the second day of the inquiry into the big four banks. The head of ANZ says the bank has changed its processes after refunding nearly 400,000 customers, nearly $30 million of fees. The fees were wrongly charged to customers transferring money between their own accounts. We made the mistake, we found it, we fixed it and we gave the money back to our customers as quickly as we could. Elliot told the committee it was a mistake made by staff but he wasn't sure if they'd face consequences. Each time we fall short, we potentially harm a customer or a member of the community and for that I apologise. He revealed during the grilling that breaches by financial planners had increased by 700% with 40 of them sacked for their mistakes. That suggests an internal culture which is at best negligent uh, and at worst deliberately structured to uh, charge fees to clients that you are not entitled to charge. Following evidence from ANZ and the Commonwealth Bank over the past two days, there are calls to set up a bank tribunal to handle customer complaints. Yes, we do want to see a, a speedy, uh, low-cost way for people to resolve uh, their complaints. The Labor Party wants a Royal Commission instead of the current inquiry and any proposed tribunal. NAB and Westpac executives will appear before Parliament on Thursday. Rhiannon Callio, QUT News. There's a new push underway to counter the growth of organised crime in Queensland. Both the state and federal governments are joining forces to form a highly specialised border security task force. This is what the authorities are taking a stronger stance against, the flow of illegal contraband into Queensland. The force is a fusion of not only state and federal police, but also customs, border protection, taxation and surveillance agencies. And the gloves are off. Illicit drugs are their principal source of profit. And we know that 60% of Australia's highest risk criminal targets are specifically involved in the ice market. It's organised crime syndicates that are the main focus. 15 people have already faced arrest for 47 offences under the new task force, including the importation of 90 kilograms of cocaine. But it's not just about closely monitoring Queensland's borders. Look, organised crime is borderless and the agencies, the Australian Federal Police and all the partners of the task force need to take that borderless approach. 28 task force officers are already operating from Customs House at Brisbane Airport. There is a complete unity of purpose, one sheet of music when it comes to these matters between the state and federal uh, agencies and governments. And the Queensland government itself is injecting an extra $39 million to turn the tide on organised crime. Jenny Archdale, QUT News. The government's campaign to stop people using their phones while driving is getting some help. And it's coming from young people worried that teenagers are killing themselves for the sake of a text. Using mobile phones while driving is not only illegal, it's a major contributor to accidents which can be fatal. The Queensland government is working with students in the second CoLab Youth Road Safety Challenge. Teams are targeting young people who make up 35% of fatalities in Queensland. Last year's campaign was a success, reaching more than 4.7 million people. Using a mobile phone while you're driving is tantamount to driving uh, drunk and over the limit in terms of the risk that you pose to yourself and to other, other uh, road users. And all 70 students are taking part in a bid to win $1,000, which will help fund their campaign. I like being able to put in a different aspect of like a different point of view. Um, being a motorcyclist myself, it's really good to see people taking safety to another level. Um, it's good being here today, being able to learn more myself, but um, also learn some stuff to, to tell everyone else. 88% of young motorists admit to using their mobile phones while driving. With even more young motorists taking to the roads, this campaign hopes to reduce these figures. But it's not just about 16 to 24 year olds. Uh, we all have our responsibilities in road safety and no matter who you are or where you're driving or what you're doing, you need to make sure that you're not distracted and resist those temptations. Tiana Barmer, QUT News. 
The Cancer Council has released a survey showing one in three Queensland kids are spending too much time in front of screens. The excessive screen time is placing children at a high risk of obesity and chronic disease. The new statistics reveal half of Queensland children aged 5 to 17 aren't active every day and that makes them vulnerable to health problems. We need to live more active lives, we need to have less screen time, encouraging our kids to do so and having those habits instilled in us as adults as role models as well. One in four Queensland children are also obese or overweight, a worrying issue for parents. Set some really great boundaries for kids around their use of technology after school, get them outdoors as well as indoors, make sure they're having a good balance and possibly try and um, restrict the use of the Google search engines in your own home. And the worst offenders are those you might expect to be more active. Teenagers are spending the most time in front of screens with only one in five meeting the recommended guidelines of 60 minutes of physical activity per day. One program called Nature Play Queensland is encouraging unstructured play outdoors and in nature and not necessarily team sport. We have a highly successful program that is proving that practical play tools such as the Nature Play Passport can inspire and encourage kids to disengage from screens and go outside and play. Meg Waller, QUT News. An 83-year-old woman has suffered painful injuries after a senseless attack in Sydney's southwest. The grandmother was walking in Moorbank when she became the target of an uncaring robber. Lorette Dewey is described as a loving grandmother and what happened to her has stunned her family and police. She was shoved to the ground by a woman trying to steal her handbag. The attacker didn't get it and ran from the scene, leaving Mrs Dewey bleeding on the footpath. Police say the assault was despicable. This uh, disgraceful and callous attack on this defenceless elderly woman, I don't know what to say, it's just um, unbelievable. Mrs Dewey has been afraid to leave her home since the attack. She's faced the media this week because she wants justice. Police are seeking help from the public to identify the person responsible. We need information to catch this animal so he can be brought before the courts and dealt with. The suspect may well strike again if not caught. The woman is described as being 20 to 30 years old and Caucasian in appearance. She was wearing dark clothing, boots and possibly carrying a backpack. Talia Rowley, QUT News. A non-for-profit Brisbane restaurant is training and employing female African refugees. And Muse in West End is offering their authentic northeast African cuisine. Welcome to Muse. Come in. Muse has employed more than 100 refugee women in the past seven years. Most are now employed elsewhere. Owner Saba Abraham set up the restaurant in 2003. She says it's about creating opportunities for women who've experienced war and torment. It's not really about money. It's, it is about how you can empower yourself and your family and feeling connected, a part of the society. The women come across Africa. Most have experienced war and lost loved ones. The staff here pride themselves on good service, but also fantastic food. Meanwhile, up to 100 people march along Adelaide Street today demanding better treatment for refugees. We owe them protection. What are we doing? We do not want this to be part of Australia's history and Australia's legacy. Today's protest was in solidarity with the people of Nauru who've been protesting every day since March. Catherine Willis, QUT News. Time now for a look at the weather. Another picture-perfect day around the southeast. Temperatures reached 28 degrees in Brisbane, Ipswich and on the Sunshine Coast, while it was slightly cooler on the Gold Coast. Around the nation tomorrow and Sydney can expect a clear spring day, 26 degrees. A cloudy day for the capital, a top of 21 in Canberra. If you're heading south, expect plenty of sun in Melbourne and Adelaide cooler in Perth and it's heating up in Darwin, a top of 36 degrees. Back to Queensland, summer is well and truly on its way. Temps in Mount Isa, Cairns and Townsville will be in the low 30s. 
A perfect day for the outdoors in Mackay and Rocky. 28 in Bundaberg. A top of 30 degrees in Longreach. The three-day outlook for Brisbane. More sunshine tomorrow and Friday. And get those swimmers ready, a very warm weekend ahead. 32 degrees on Saturday. That brings you up to date with the weather. Goodbye. And that's all the news we have for now. We're back tomorrow with more QUT News. Goodbye. Goodbye.